Hello again. This is um, morphing, bleeding, venting, combining, hybridizing, a couple different concepts of um, how to design, how to find a contrast between your mind's eye and your eye's eye, um, trusting senses. Trusting senses to have a sense of history, a sense of counterpoint, looking for counterpoint, um, all those good things that make life so full. Um, I'm going to go from um, this sketch up as we just cleared another sketch up boot camp. We're going to try a couple more because uh, the ability to do, think, feel, move through. Um, 3D space manipulate is um, so much fun, so fulfilling, so fulfilling in this new century of 3D printing and finding different forms, even in, as social VR, as these new forms emerge, as more people adopt them. For example, uh, past two years during COVID, I've been doing social VR staging finals in it, usually classical or non-Western scripts, such as Conference of the Birds, um, um, some roomy pieces, some um, Chinese classic, Dream of the Red Chamber, Monkey King, and now I've been doing these things in social VR where people can interact, act. A um, lot of people, students, um, think it's blasé. I think well, this is not a blasé century, so why be blasé about what we can do? The front runner, free front runner to this is called Spatial.io. Um, it is a social VR program. Last night I had my assistant um, furiously grab a globe theater from online at Sketchfab for free. We're aiming for all this stuff for free. Um, of course, it's grabbing your cookies. Um, uh, but hauled it into, uh, not SketchUp, but to Spatial I.O. A lot of these have lingua francas between them, being .obj, uh, .stl, I think this was. Um, a file format that allows for the textures to be brought in, the wood textures. Um, I've, I'm going to ask him to send that. I'm going to ask him to lecture on this um, the ability to do the, 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 the tooling of bringing these things into space, to discuss, to collaborate, to make these things social VR. Anyway, he brought it in. We did the films from Rick's. Um, upbringing in Manchester, working class Manchester, New Hampshire as a spent Rust Belt town using the framing of King Lear, talking about uh, uh, resentful children, ungrateful children, ungrateful legacies, chaos, all that other good stuff. Chaos, 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 the chaos of economic decline, the chaos of, of post-industrialism, the chaos of new gender, race, um, uh, personal, uh, uh, sexual narratives that people take on, seemingly chaotic, but our job as intelligent people, artists, academics certainly, articulators are not to promulgate propaganda, but to allow for others to see the beauty in chaos, the order in chaos, the permanent disorder, the ability to debate, the d ability to have discourses about all of these forms. I personally am sort of a Swiss army knife. I have many hopefully sharp blades that come out. One is which is this 4D aspect to including the dimension of time of 3D. To, so today we're talking about uh, making sense, um, popping these things in and out of each other as they exist in d digits, ones and zeros, and have taken over our lives with, like money and love and war and all these other big things. They remain a mystery, remain a mystery specifically because of their chaos. Um, certain neo-romantics love to stay in that chaos, like myself. Um, because there's where the, the sensate, sensual textures are of any of these things, money, love, war, 
um, uh, fear, hope, all of these emotions. But let's get to a notion of doing, presenting a piece, um, using the tools. Um, the One of the books I have for my GLI cl globalism class is called Digital Plenitude, which the author very aptly starts with this notion, don't know what the internet is. Um, that class is about cities, and cities and the internet are sort of like siblings 6,000 years apart, uh, which makes them full of rivalry. The rivalry between um, cities as they were formed through algorithms much similar to the algorithms of the internet have proceeded through the era. Um, what else about this? Um, incredibly fecund, incredibly interesting, incredibly um, dynamic these things emerge and our priestly classes want to make sense for us in order to sell us stuff or take away things such as um, meaning of uh, uh, identity, freedom, uh, even our sense of oblivion, take it away and give it back to us for a price usually, um, for the price of stratifying society. How do we get around to developing our voice and talking over the priestly class and saying, nope, we, we're seeing what we want to see here and we're being articulate about it. We're not propagandists like you. Um, the new priestly class, such as doctors, lawyers, professors, um, uh, you know, always want to intercede above us. And I'm really a professor who is into autodidacticism. Um, great, I think I mentioned this, uh, one of the current quotes that I really love is Isaac Asimov, the, m the most formal education can do for you is train you into a method to become an autodidact. That is so true um, through our lives. And that's all I'm trying to do for you guys here. Um, um, your Virgilian guide, your mentor, your midwife, to keep the curiosity high. Every time you turn to me and said, am I doing OK? It's like I, I spit it back to you. Are you doing OK? What, do you, what, what are the hows and whys? What are you figuring out here? The how is a ancient Greek theater constructed by some person left for free on SketchUp. There are terms and limits on that SketchUp. It is intellectual property and all that. Those who are into the new NFT world of like mimicking, cloning, copying, changing the, bit, the brick and mortar world into these things know kind of the drill. Um, money represents time. Um, the mystery of money, war, love, and a few other things is that it has to grow. It has to grow in order to get other people onto the pyramid scheme of these societal beehive type operations. But as we're realizing very quickly on a finite planet, even though Elon Musk sends cars out the tips of his rockets, um, we're, the limits to growth are real. So we have to start thinking of permaculture, start, not, yeah, looking inward, but not looking downward. This, I'm going to put our glass cube as an extension of, of our, um, sorry, I'm shaking around, take your drama at me. Um, this is uh, a lead off from our last endeavor in um, SketchUp. It was kind of a boot camp to talk about extraction, extrusion, painting, translucency. Um, I don't know what happened. I got to get to that where it used to be an animation function where we could then turn it into a film and move it around and relay it back as a 2D form. One of the th processes I want you guys to also think about is um, what is it? What are we, ultimately what do we want to do with this? Um, last night was the first manifestation of um, the Earl of Lear, combining both a, a, a noir, Eisenhower era American man into the armature, as someone said, the scaffolding of Lear. Um, that was the final manif manifestation, to put all of this media, this sound, we had a theremin, and all these other things into a devised work to throw up to 
have people watch it, react to it emotionally, to hopefully have discourses about it. This is a planning to do kind of a cool, weird thing to a Greek stage. I've had the opportunity to wander across these Greek stages in Syracuse, um, in Greece, in Delos, um, in Taormina. Um, these things are fantastic. Uh, Taormina and Delos particularly have this framing off of the landscape. So this is the Netflix, the internet, the, the, the Hulu, the whatever of the ancient times, but they were also looking to a collectivist experience, of an experience together of what they were seeing. Let's go further. Um, let's open up our study. We did these squares and forms, our last class period. Um, I want you to uh, shift command four, make screen captures of these thingies. As you can see, we left our scale woman in there. Uh, I want to take object select tool, select this. Um, I put this camera on parallel projection. Here's perspective. And here is um, parallel projection again. Boom, boom, copy. Uh, get this the heck out of there. Aim for something here in the middle. Two fingers help us zoom in and out. This is, where is this? Somewhere in Greece, I think. And, or Turkey. Paste it. And there it is. It is some sort of construct in the middle of this ancient Greek theater. Now, if we're doing an NFT of social VR world anywhere that it doesn't matter. Permits don't matter. Budgets don't matter. Hey, let's just put it in the middle of somewhere. This is the freaky, surreal part of the common, this age, is that um, we can put it anywhere. Uh, command key one gets us across. Um, let's move this across the stage. Let's um, do something weird, such as line this up with um, scale it up so we can imagine human beings crawling across it let's just say it's a rock and roll show we're doing it in an ancient greek roman theater like pink floyd used to do when they're live from pompeii concerts um, before perhaps thousands of people were destroying the archaeological site they're yet to excavate i think one third of the city and they come up with new and newer and newer and newer old things out of that amazing city. It used to do the um, study abroad and go to Pompeii. I love that place. Um, loved it since I was about three years old. History freak. Let's stretch this. Stretch it this way. Stretch it that way. Let's not think of stage business or whether our priestly director says yes or no or maybe or whatever. Let's just look at this. Um, Let's save it. Let's um, back it up with our object select tool. C click, move it back, keep it on the ground. See an entrance to that. Uh, do command key three. Ooh, I'm liking it. Um, perhaps, oops, clicked off. Oh no, styles right up here. Um, let's do like we did before, go into our darkness. I don't like those white lines. Go into this. I don't like the yellow lines. Um, yeah, I do not like the turquoise. Um, play around with it until we get some. There they disappear somewhat. And we got a pinkish sky. Um, back that up. Click the object select off. Um, take your shift command four. Do a um, a screenshot for us, uh, orbit tool, let's look at it in the environment, the genus loci, um, and do another, uh, screenshot, uh, overhead, perfecto, uh, do another one that fills your file up with these things, zoom in, zoom out, zoom around, you have your key commands to do this, but let's just, Imagine we had a kind of cool budget. We're doing this theatrical production of a Greek classic. Um, 
Orstai. I'm seeing Orstai in a couple days. Um, zoom in. Um, we see the ancient structure. A lot of times these people are making this thing, these things through a process called photogrammetry, where they're actually going in with a camera, and the camera can photograph things as mathematical forms. Um, zoom out. Zoom over. Zoom in. I think I'm going to prescribe this for my urbanism students. Um, the same sketch up as I consider this a, a tool of the educated. Uh, certainly at a tier one research STEM university, shame on them not teaching CAD. Um, and let's take a couple more shots. To give our collaborators, give ourselves, give us our eyes eye um, a type of a bearing. And again, I make that notion, the, the separation dichotomy between the mind's eye and the eye's eye. Um, it's, it's a wonderful world, gang. This is just, um, you know, so many challenges. May we live in interesting times, as the Chinese proverb goes, but the, these are interesting times. They're, they're breathtaking. Um, let's do one more shot of this. And let's see a camera as a parallel projection. That's what it looks like in pure isometric parallel projection. Let's see it from a couple other angles. That's behind. That's the side. That's another side, which adds an interesting take to this. Let's grab it. And three, I think, yes. Beautiful little red thing in that ancient, ancient, ancient theater. Again, we could put this in social VR, we can have 30 or more people now in there collaborating. Um, spatial I.O. gave you legs. We're not just floating torsos anymore. Um, these are, after COVID, these are interesting times of collaboration over distances. Um, as it is now in the New York area, gas is up around five bucks a gallon. It's always been high in Europe. Um, people are complaining that their SUVs can't pack it. Um, and um, we're hacking it by doing social VR sites. So let's get back to this notion of chaos. Here we've taken the chaos of age, uh, decay, decrepitude. We have someone go in and photograph a photogrammetric map of, I think, maybe they trimmed it up with, with handmade stuff or um, fooled around a little bit with it. Um, it is, um, oh, one thing I do want you to do is to turn your shadows on, see what we got. Ooh, gray shadows. Anyway, I just bought an extra clip-on for SketchUp. I think it's Maxwell, one of the big ones that will render this in terms of light interface um, uh, as if light hits surfaces, surfaces in its usual way, glass, other things. These, this is, I forget the name for this, but the, basically these things are flat sort of vectors. Um, the SketchUp won't. You can do primitive polygon type things with it, but it doesn't handle polygons the way that Form Z or other programs that you have to pay big money for. Um, um, these are tools. These are tools that cost money. These are tools that we have to continue to think about aesthetics with. Um, what are they like? One of the forms styles I am always default toward is not the color sets, but the style builder. And I like this pencil made thing. As you can see, it's done in pencil. I kind of like the so-called honesty of it. Maybe it's dishonest because it's not really a pencil. Um, but I go to edit and here I go to this second one in, turn that on, go to style across seeing different aspects of the x-ray, turn this middle one on, and our color comes back. How cool is that? Um, that's our color again in this pencil line form. Um, the background is white. Let's go further. 
further and further and further. Okay, um, let's clear out of SketchUp. And one of the, uh, get everybody off this. Um, that was our starting point. Um, uh, a a um, exercise we did before, that's perspective. Let's turn it to parallel. Um, I'm geeking out. I think these things are so beautiful and so um, procedural. They, they, come, they come everywhere. They, you can make them everywhere, anywhere, anytime. Um, it's a beautiful epoch leading to some forms of beautiful meritocracy and democracy and the ability to make these things if we have certain forms to do them in. Chaos, 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 chaos. Um, found this great site on chaotic things such as this is a series of uh, fights in um, places of governance across the world. I think it was Japanese it's a, or Taiwan or wherever they people got upset and started, uh, senators or whatever got upset and started to have a fight and this artist went in looking for the order in the chaotic composition of grown government senators having fist fights and hair pulling and Jerry Springer type things. Um, and I thought it was so interesting that this ancient Egyptian, Greek, Pythagorean, Fibonacci series thing was lining up on these compositions. It's something, there are <coughs> so many, um, so many sites out there or apps out there on your phone to actually help you create these things um, that it's amazing. Um, so let's just go through this, the, the philosophy of looking for order and chaos, the philosophy of, of scouring the site. This was for the Lear show. What is it about? What are we looking for? Here's a muscled man in a Renaissance uh, painting. Here's Saint Sebastian. What are we, what, you know, by Albert Cadur here. Um, we're looking for, artists looks for not just order, like in a, a kind of a minimalist sculptor or painter or Mondrian or a, a Ad Reinhardt or someone even in Ad Reinhardt has these interesting cartoons that talk about the real 180 function of painting. It's about the surface. It's about the act, it's about the intention, it's about, and the manifestation are squares. In the case of Ad Reinhardt, they're dark, dark, black and brown squares that barely have that influence, which barely um, play, just like Irwin, just like a lot of, um, oh God, who's the artist who does, I'm blanking, the, the bought a whole volcano in Arizona uh, 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 to play with the notions of sky and limits and lids. He's got a, it'll come to me. Um, anyway, to play around the, exactly between the eye's eye and the mind's eye. Eye's eye, what have we been trained? Um, eye's eye, what are we seeing? What are we seeing naturally? What are we seeing as a beast? What are we seeing as this limited physiognomy. Can we ever separate the two, the cultural eye's eye and the natural uh, the natural eye's eye and or the mind's eye? Um, uh, uh, these are things people are playing with to um, find that ambiguity and certainly Dora is talking about the, the notion of, in the biblical notion of Saint Sebastian being you know, uh, executed by arrows. Apparently he survived and was patched up. But this is a favorite theme, uh, certainly Christ and the two robbers next to them. Um, these Renaissance painters were interested in going back to the Greeks and the Romans and finding out the perfect, perfect, I don't know, the mimicry of phy physiognomy and going to back to the mind's eye of what it is to see um, uh, something naturalistic representation. Of course, we had that um, 
is kind of adeptly and almost comically related in uh, Tom Wolfe's book, uh, The Painted Word. Um, the dichotomy between the word painted, which is the night up to the 19th century view that the painting was a window onto another world, like a window onto the crucifixion, and other things. I got throttled. You hear my voice? Um, yes. Okay, we'll continue. If you hear my voice, um, I got throttled in the image there. Um, Masaccio did something with placing the body in perspective. These people ostensibly are taking form and playing with the mind's eye, which is biblical themes, what we should do in life, what society tells you, what society teaches you how to see, and the eye's eye. They return back to um, out of the, the so-called spiritual ethereal aspects of medieval painting and sculpture back into a kind of a adept draftsmanship. I like both actually. Um, I think both have their places. Another, it's not Albert Durer, but um, another working out, um, the blue and the the Conte Cran, the working out of the surface, having the surface as a um, um, a highlight with a white Conte Cran, playing with drapery. These Renaissance guys, some girls, were fascinating in uh, uh, fascinated in what new things, new old things, the human body could do as represented. Fractals are part of that, which gets up into our century. The fractalization of reality. Are there things that mimic the larger world smaller? And again, another mind's eye type configuration I'm using as. Um, uh, certainly, uh, Salvador Dali worked with these notions of of can we, with hyper draftsmanship and sense of lighting and modeling and character, portray these fantastic worlds in terms of aligning the stage setting of each. Um, this is a drawing made out of threads, or thread drawing, thread drawing, thread drawing. Um, this is from the Delator, the French painter who wanted to see form emerge out of one point. Candles, um, the repentant Magdalene, taking this theme of the Magdalene, the, the prostitute that followed around Christ and what she is in contemplation in at a lonely table, thinking of mortality, thinking of what happened. Again, the skull on the lap of the Magdalene staring into the candle. These are very serene um, serene subject matters, serene um, creations of light striking the subject and exquisitely beautiful. Um, we have reference lines, reference lines in realist paintings, the uh, Toulouse-Lautrec painting, the chaos of drunkards, alcoholics, absent, absence drinkers in um, the, the the um, era of, uh, of late 19th century France, which had just gone through the Franco-Prussian War, the French Commune, where communards were attempting a communist society out of urban living and dwelling, and they were crushed utterly. They killed a lot of them, um, uh, the French government. Um, uh, and so uh, Toulouse-Lautrec was trying to portray the despair. Uh, we have uh, Piero della Francesca, the flagellation of Christ. If worked out, this is much, much deeper than it appears to be. We have the Dutch painters working out their sense of perspective. Uh, Diego Rivera having the implicit geometry out of the chaos, terror, cruelty of laying St. Bartholomew alive. Um, so these subjects hold up after all these years. Luakuan, 
remember seeing this as a 19 year old in my history, 18 year old history class. Um, uh, a supposedly Roman model, there's some kind, it's in the Vatican, some controversy whether actually Michelangelo sculpted it. Um, that's fun to think of that. Um, the contemporary body, what's happening with that, what standard of beauty is going on. Golden ratio applied to faces, applied to planar faces, some famous actresses, Nefertiti in the middle, um, some famous actors, what actually is the planar aspects of their faces, um, what standards in our mind's eye do we hold of beauty, uh, what can we say of that in our eye's eye, uh, applying this to um, a tree. You can buy this on eBay, it's kind of fun. Uh, and then this scene from The Matrix, holding it into which deals with social VR and these other realities, what is reality. Um, interesting, in the grid, this is the B24 that collided with the um, Empire State Building in the fog. Again, dealing with this notion of, of what is real in the fog flying over New York. What could really be real out there? And that one day at the end of World War II, 1945, I think this plane collided with the building. I think it barely killed 10 people, but it was devastating. Um, Renaissance paintings. Um, Rohingya uh, um, uh, refugees, what kind of sense can we make for a, a police riot with horses? Um, it appears very, very classical and Renaissance and very, uh, with our mind's eye, our cultural mind's eye, we can reapply the forms of, of golden sections, um, the riots, the, the Pythagorean formulas, um, uh, these are children in the courtyard. And this is very interesting. This was an assassination of a public official in a ga at a gallery opening in Istanbul. And the photographer is right there at risk of being shot himself, um, just kept snapping. Um, and when applied, um, somehow framed these pieces almost to these Renaissance biblical proportion. The gunman, murderer, assassin was declaring something to the population still with a loaded gun after assassinating the official he wanted to and this is an award-winning pho photograph for its sense of time, composition, place, danger it placed upon its photographer. Content is everywhere. This is wonderful. We see the Fibonacci um, uh, fractal recursive folding square making its way, rectangle actually, there's a square within there, but it's a rectangle that generates itself inward or outward. And we see this applied to um, fighting senators. Pretty comic, huh? Um, color is wonderful, filtering the choice of composition. It harkens back to these late Renaissance Baroque compositions and paintings. Uh, one of your assignments for your files, your folders, is to look for order in chaos. Um, uh, uh, incredibly interesting with our point and shoots, our cameras, our phone cameras, our ability to suck out uh, reality. I told you day one that your eye should be a vacuum cleaner. You just suck it in, whether it's encountering the eye's eye or the mind's eye. Um, eye's eye, I want to, you to think more along the lines of what is nature teaching you to see. Um, and the mind's eye, what is culture teaching you to see? A uh, couple different things. Um, the uh, David, uh, painting of uh, Napoleon, the Velasquez, um, which I saw this painting in the Prado. Interesting, you could not photograph anything in the Prado somehow. I didn't see the sign and photographed it. I had actually a man turn around and look at me photographing and he resembled the, um, the Velasquez figure over there on the left, the painter. The 
painting of the king and the queen here reflected in the mirror, this interruption of a scene, um, the court dwarf and the little princess enter into and they're saying, oh baby, there, there's serious painting going on here. Stay clear, blah, blah, blah. And Velasquez right here um, capturing the moment, but we also see this final imposition of order across that. Order. Order of a mirror. Um, order in National Geographic photos of the yellow behind this girl. Order in Trump's hair. Some, something like that. Um, the tsunamis. Uh, tsunamis of ancient Japan. Um, we can keep reapplying this to almost anything we see. I like looking for it, not just in the accidents of cityscapes, but also in the fundamental design of cars and so forth, things like that. Um, endless, 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 endless application of these formulas, these cultural things. Here's a tourist just doing a, a Baroque thing against some public space thingy there I found. More fights in senates, the, the chaos. But the artist, intelligent person, sensitive person's task is to look and see if we can make sense out of this. These are fantastic. And then the artist just, uh, I think this is somewhere in Central Asia, um, turning these things, look at how he's cranking his head around. Um, it's just like um, morality shows. Back to the Velasquez, Las, Las Meninas. I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, the, uh, the Renaissance again. Order lines, ordering lines. Masaccio. These women crying were painted in later because it was felt like this is, this is too real. This is the figure Christ is supposed to be ethereal, non-real, um, uh, untouchable in some sense, and Masaccio just laid him out like he was in a morgue. So um, the, the church felt they had to paint in some weeping women um, into this painting. Uh, Raphael. Um, in cemeteries, just what happens through time and composition. Uh, uh, David, the death of Marat, stabbed to death by Charlotte Corday. Uh, Vermeer, one of my favorites, just seems so simple, so mundane, but the beauty resonates outward in terms of fractals, in terms of Fibonacci series to the rest of the universe. From that one point, it extends into all reality and all sides everywhere through all time. Um, amazing works. He was supposedly an art dealer. Um, Russian painting, Russian painting, Russian painting, arabesque coming through the Degas. Uh, we are seeing order everywhere. Order of ballerina, order of something beautiful, order of fishing nets in Southeast Asia. Um, looking for order where you shoot, the rules of thirds um, being a, a standard thing. Um, order in disorder, uh, Judith and Holofernes, cutting off Holofernes's head. This is done by famous woman painter, painter who was a woman, um, uh, Artemisia Gentilisi, I think it is. Um, uh, and then finally up to the last moments. That is it for now. Chaos and order. Order from chaos. Don't apply a constipated sense of order to chaos, but look for a dialogue in the chaos. Look for a dialogue between the eye's eye and the mind's eye. Um, what else? We learned about the SketchUp applying, even to the photogrammetric spaces, ages old, applying your ideas. Where do they end up? Do you get a budget to make this a stage, or is it in social VR? We know not where. Um, the beautiful aspect of the digital age is that we can translate between the senses. Um, so that carrying around your pocket phone with 4K resolution, I've got a Samson S20, love it, tends to push the, the, the contrast a little heavy coming out of it. 
Um, there are tools at your disposal, but we always have our old school tools, such as our sketch diaries. Um, painting both what is out there in the eye's eye and uh, reapplying it in terms of the mind's eye. Here are my studies on shadow form, silhouette, um, pure form, pure constructive riffing in a space. Um, I'll try and get my uh, webcam set up above these units and photograph down so we can actually have an exercise in drawing. But for now, this is what we did um, in our fabulous program SketchUp. We can move it, we can see it in a new light, we can then take it and do screen captures, and um, we can have in infinite fun with all of this stuff. Um, so that is it for continuation of SketchUp Boot Camp into Chaos Out of Order, or Order Out of Chaos. See you next time.